Howdy ho guys and welcome to another Bodhi New Vlog. How you guys doing? I'm excited for today because I've got some great uh, ideas to share with you today, right? Um, so anyway, in this entry I wanted to talk about something that, you know, the people in the spiritual field would be will be very familiar with, particularly if particularly if you follow Teo Swan, the spiritual catalyst. You know, and that is the area of shadow work, right? You know, I've, I've made an entry about this before, uh, but I wanted to touch upon a, you know, the topic of shadow work in this entry, right? And more specifically, I wanted to kind of delve a bit deeper in, in terms of, you know, the targets of shadow work, which is the shadow, you know, I wanted to kind of shed a bit more light on what the shadow is and how we can better do shadow work. You know, in order to help us become more aligned, you know, more free, more happy, more at peace with ourselves, right? Because that's the ultimate goal of all of this, right? It is to find that 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 inner peace within ourselves, you know, so that we can then go and live an amazing life, right? So anyway, shadow. What is the shadow? Well, that's a good fucking question, isn't it? <laughs> you know, what is the shadow? You know, what is this 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 fucking nemesis that we have demonized so much in the spiritual community, or or the psycho, you know, the the the, uh, the area of psychology, right? You know, what is this thing? Well, essentially, the shadow is, you know, using teals. Um, description is the shadow is a part is the aspect of us that we have suppressed to the point of not knowing that we don't know right it, it's basically it's the sides of us that we don't know that we don't know about right and you know typically we you know, in the spiritual field, you know, lo those of us who are starting out, you know, in, sp in spirituality and by extension, you know, emotional healing, um, you know, we, we start off with this mentality of trying to eliminate the shadow or rather thinking of the shadow in terms of something that we need to eliminate, right? Because the shadow must be the thing that is fucking my life up, right? The shadow must be the source of all of my problems. The shadow must be, you know, the final kind of frontier between me and transcendence, right? That's the kind of mentality that we have when we start off. But the reality of it is that the shadow is not a monster, right? The shadow is merely a side of us that we have disowned because we have judged it to be ugly and not deserving to be in this world, right? That's all it is, you know. To be honest, the shadow is actually a very innocent entity, you know. It is a very innocent aspect of ourselves, right? But it has nonetheless been judged to be something that is ugly and the source of all of our problems and all of that stuff right so ego and shadow were formed within us when we were young right we, we, we were born into this world without a perception of separation right when we were born into this world we were part of this, 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 like this infinite and gargantuan, gargantuan um, flow of, you know, like kind of ebb and flow of energy. You know, as as I explained in one of my entries, talking about you know logic versus emotion, right? You know, emotion links us to the this this kind of like transferal of energy that kind of goes about at the very you know foundation of, of our of our universe right you know it is essentially this 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 ebb and flow and, and transferal of energy right 
and it is all happening at the same time and it's all part of this unified whole right this this kind of you know end seamless transition of energy right and when we were born that's what we were part of right but as we grow up in this physical existence as a human being right we come to realize that there must be distinctions right there must be something that is desired or good and something that is not desired or bad right and our environment plays a major role in in essentially reinforcing that idea you know into us right and so as children we we kind of pick up subconsciously from you know our environment whether that be our parents or school or whatever it is you know what is right and what is wrong right it's funny that you know they teach they teach us this idea right and wrong in such an innocent like and nonchalant way in school but like the idea of right and wrong is actually the very thing that has caused us to separate within ourselves right and this dynamic of ego and shadow is essentially a process of self-flagellation self-attack right and that's what that's what we realize the more that we delve into this practice of emotional healing you know shadow work when we try to resolve the, these emotional issues within us we realize that it's not actually the emotions that are, that are the problem rather it is the suppression it is the rejection of these emotions of these feelings within us which are very innocent and have a place in this world have a right to exist and yet we have su we have suppressed and rejected them because of this abstract paradigm that we have been you know essentially conditioned with and that is why we're dysfunctional right initially we think that we're dysfunctional because of our fucked up emotions right because we're weird like that right you know particularly sensitive you know highly sensitive beings we're the worst of it right we're we're the most fucking like self you know self deprecating and, and like self harming right in in this way you know we're, we're like we judge ourselves so harshly but as we go through this journey we realize that it isn't those things that we judge that are wrong it's the judgment itself and the judgment itself was conditioned into us right and that conditioning that splitting within us into aspects that are desirable or good and aspects that are undesirable or bad or wrong was so painful that we had to make it we made it subconscious with ourselves right because this is essentially what happened right you know we were vulnerable as children coming into this world right and so we had to rely on our caregivers whether that be our parents or our teachers you know to take care of us right but we have our own experience you know we have our own energetic truth emotional truth right you know and yet that comes at odds with what our parents deem or, or like teachers or caregivers deem as being good right and with that that discrepancy right between what your caregivers or our caregivers tell us is the right thing to do and our actual and our actual authentic truth when there when there is a rift between those things we suffer a punishment whether you know and, and that punishment is abandonment it is direct punishment you know being shouted at be having things taken away from us having like freedoms taken away from us you know being treated like not so well right we were punished by it right by our environment collectively right and so we grow up with this sense and it's highly subconscious before we we start to do this 
shadow work, which is essentially making what is un what is unknown to us that we don't know, to being something that we at least consciously know exists, even though like we have more and more things that we dig out from it, right? We realize that you know there is a difference that, that, that there is what we should do and what we actually feel right and those two things cannot exist at the same time they cannot right because on one side of the spectrum we're being told to keep a stiff upper lip and never show like emotional upheaval or like any sort of drama right but the other side of us wants to be dramatic you know that is what is it is authentically feeling right and so we give way to our authentic feeling or, or rather we give way sorry we give way to this this sterilized image of who of how we should be you know this good boy this good girl at the cost of our, our authentic feeling right this is why we're dysfunctional it's not because we are angry or like we are petty or we are whatever it is because we think that is wrong right the ego wants love you know the ego is like you know the component to the shadow that acts as its it, it's kind of bodyguard you know because the ego is all about opposition the ego feeds itself off of you know a nemesis having a nemesis the ego needs a rival it needs an enemy it needs a nemesis right and the ego finds love by fighting essentially you know the ego fights for the shadow because the shadow is a collection of our authentic feelings and desires that have been essentially st like stabbed to death by us you know as a function of what society subconsciously like influenced us with as children and the ego becomes this the ego becomes this monster that 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 fights for the sh that fights for the shadow but simultaneously fights the shadow right the ego is this monster this beast that that has that is rooted in the subconscious belief that it can't have love that it can't have belonging and so like it, it destroys because it is the only way you know it finds antag like antagonism like it, it is antagonistic because it's it, it subconsciously but like it is it is based on the, on the shadow's subconscious belief that it is not deserving of love right so the reason the sh like i said the reason the shadow exists is because of the suppression of authentic feeling right the shadow is actually a very innocent pure expression of who we are but when we learn to suppress suppress the shadow to the, to the point that it becomes a shadow the the kind of overall message that we give to ourselves is i don't deserve to be here i don't fucking deserve to be here and the ego emerges as this monster that wreaks havoc on our lives and other people's lives because subconsciously it, or, or rather it goes off of the, the shadow subconscious belief that it is not deserving of love think about it you know like if i say to you you subconsciously think 
that you're a piece of shit. Does that resonate with you? Sure, sure as hell resonates with me, or rather how I was, you know, as I was coming up and, and like undergoing this process of emotional healing, right? The, and this is the thing, right? The ego becomes this cancer almost. Because the thing is, the ego is like the biggest fucking martyr ever, the, the biggest tragic hero, if you will, the, the biggest tragic character ever in this whole play of life, right? Because, you know, once, once we have finished attacking the shadow, or rather like the ego attacks the shadow and then it attacks itself, right? The ego is the ultimate tragic character, right? Because... The ego wants love. That's all it wants. The reason the ego exists is because it, like, the shadow essentially has told it, you know, has informed it without us knowing, obviously, that, you know, okay, dude, or do that. You're not deserving of love. It's all you now. The, sh the shadow just sits there. You know, it's all you now. And the ego's like, fuck, fucking shit. You know, <laughs> like, I need to, uh, I need, I need to, I need to do things. You know, I need to fight. I need to fight because fighting is the only way that I'll find love, right? And so the ego is the problem, but the ego is also something that is trying to fight for you. The reason I say it's like the most, the ultimate tragic character in this whole play of, of us, of, of our, our existence is because it shoots itself trying to find love essentially. It thinks, it thinks because of, or rather I say ego, ego is, is is one component to this ego shadow dynamic, right? It is essentially the splitting with of our consciousness within, right? Two components of, of this 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 separation, right? But this this ego shadow entity within us essentially poisons itself, trying to find the thing that it wants to find, and of course, by poisoning itself, it never gets the thing that it wants ultimately, which is love, right? And that is essentially the realization you will reach as you do shadow work, as you do emotional healing. It is that trying to find an answer or to try to, or trying to eliminate and to control ourselves is never going to lead to any sort, any sense of peace. Or resolution within us. Never. The shadow is never going to go away. The ego is never going to go away. Or rather, the shadow and the ego are never going to go away as long as we continue to antagonize them and to try to separate them. You know, because separation itself is the problem, right? That is the problem. And the solution It's actually pretty simple, you know, to be honest with you. It's like you the reason we get into trouble when we do this is because we think it has to be complicated, but it's not. Separation. The need for a nemesis. You know, the need to struggle through adversity in order to reach a thing that we need to reach. The need for things to be complicated, otherwise there's no value to them. Don't you see that this is what we subconsciously absorbed when we were children? Because as when we were children, when we were just coming out of the womb, into this harsh world that was full of fucking separation, you know, we like... 
we we did not feel that separation. We did not feel that separation. But as we grow up, you know, we we are essentially influenced to, to the to the point where we become more and more separated. We must earn love. Do you think like we feel like we need to earn love as children? Of course not. Love is who we are, right? And the journey of emotional healing, or rather, it's much more than that, to be honest with you. you know, emotional healing is like, you know, obviously a convenient label that we affix to this, you know, tapping into your sensitivity, like I say, but like, it's whatever label you want to give it to, it's self-actualization, enlightenment, that's all it is. It's finding your authenticity and, and rediscovering the love that is inherent within you. Because the more that we think that we need to fight, the more that we think that we need to do, you know, that is separation. And you learn the, the distinction between the feeling of separation and the feeling of integration, right? That is something that when you get to the advanced stages of emotional healing and shadow work, you realize, right? It isn't so much about what you do or what you think. And if anything, if you do that too much, you're actually separating yourself more and more. You know, the more that you clear, as you know, Matt Kahn says, like the more that you clear, the more that you find to clear. The more that you heal, ironically, the more the more comes up that you need to heal, right? Whenever you find yourself trying to force yourself to be a certain way, trying to force yourself to to be to like, to to, un, to like along the lines of like you know I need to do more I need to work harder right I need to do more before I can be whole before I can find peace before I can be whole that's a sign to you that you're going the wrong way it's not harder you need to strive towards it's easier that you release yourself into that's that's a secret you know that is a secret to shadow work or emotional healing you know that's how you reconcile this ego shadow chimera back into this angelic hole it is to accept everything it is to let go of everything it is to find the easy path in life because love is easy love is easy it's so easy and you have and once you realize that that's when you're healed that's when you no longer need to heal you know like Matt Kahn talks about this you know he talks about the love revolution whatever arises love that you know his book this is what he's saying this is what he means by, are you going to clear forever, or are you going to love forever? You know, Teal Swan, are you, like, you can become harder, or you can become softer? My articulation, are you going to keep thinking that you need to become, you need to, like, make things more, com more and more complicated, more and more differentiated? Or are you going to realize that love is the easy way out? It's only your subconscious belief that love has to be, has to come via hard work and struggle, you know, and understanding, you know, and seeing and, you know, verifying, you know. That's why, that's why love always seemed to escape. Or rather, that's... That is why love does not exist for a lot of people in the world. It's because they, they aren't connected with the feeling of love, which is very simple. You know, it, this is very difficult to explain in words, honestly. It's very fucking difficult to explain in words because it's not a word, it's not like a, a concept, really. You know, the goal of this is to feel 
more to be to allow more of your authentic feeling to arise and to feel that peace that comes from that where you can just be yourself and feel whatever it is you want without having to like do anything or earn permission from anyone from yourself you know when you no longer have to judge anything anymore and you have to think like so fucking complicated about these things you know that is how that you know that is the secret to happiness you know and it is something that unfortunately most people aren't going to understand until they are shown it like and regrettably you know this is just me sharing my insight you know but like just by me speaking this is not really enough to show anyone who doesn't understand what i'm talking about in terms of like how to really heal yourself and connect with love and to move away from this like subconscious association we have where like we don't deserve what we love and like i'm going to make an entry about that actually which is going to dive into that a bit more you know we don't we feel that we don't deserve the good things in life that's 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 the only that's the only reason we take the heart the high road that's the only reason we become tough it's because like we're like oh well fuck it you know the shadow is subconsciously feeding to the ego yeah we don't deserve love fuck love love has fucked us over you know being myself isn't going to fucking help why the fuck do you think why the, the shadow's like why the fuck do you think i'm so why the why would you why do you think i'm fucking excuse me why else would you think i'm fucking like subconscious to you because like you obviously don't fucking want me around here so fuck you and the ego's like well fuck you back <laughs> no and that becomes our whole existence is like trying to fight and be strong and be tough and to try and earn love and to be tough you know and hard and it's like i don't know it's a balance really you know if i'm honest with you but like i thought i'd give this perspective for anyone who like is on that path you know is who's doing shadow work is doing emotional healing and to give you a bit of articulation, maybe you already know this, and hopefully you do. You know, this isn't, you know, I'm just another idiot, you know. Like, I don't really view myself as anything spectacular. Like, or rather, like, obviously I love myself, you know. Like, <laughs> there's, a, there's a bit of ego there. But, like, at the same time, like, I want people to to realize this within themselves as well, you know. There's, like things just aren't such a like they aren't a big deal you know things um they really aren't but anyway cool i'm gonna wrap this up now is this, this is i've basically said my message i wanted to say so cool shadow work emotional healing keep doing it you know keep keep like trying to understand and to define it and to do your practices but like when when the time comes when it's no longer working you know this is something that teal swan picked up on recently as well i watched one of her interviews interviews recently when you realize that healing doesn't work anymore you need, you need to you need to let go and like to be honest with you like i wouldn't worry about it too much because like it kind of happens by itself you know again this is another thing that matt Kant said I'm just quoting them because I guess it's cool, you know, they're cool. Um, yeah, like, you know, there's, there's an, as he says, there's an auspicious moment when the why lets go of them or you, right? Which is essentially saying that, like, you never need to force anything, you know, like you, it's sometimes it's nice to have like a mental fixture on something. So you understand where you're headed at least. But like in terms of like making it happen, you don't really have to do anything. All you need to do is to like kind of let it happen, which is another way of saying follow your feelings, right? Which is another way of saying be brave because it, it does take courage, right? Because like the toughness of the ego shadow complex that we have, that is predicated on, on fear and like it is very fearful itself of letting go of what it has because 
it's it's like it's tough you know it's hard it like it's brittle it wants to keep things exactly where they are and to like keep like a really sturdy defense oh shit like i don't want any weakness to leak in because like it re like you know it can't afford to just let go into love because it's it thinks subconsciously that love does not it's not there for it it doesn't deserve love anyway cool i hope this entry has been helpful uh, and uh, I will catch you guys in the next entry. Peace out.